And we go to six-handed play. Love six-handed play. Love queen 10. Let's hit him with a three bet. Pow, there it is. <laughs> you knew that one was coming. Uh, Nutty's been opening at a reasonable frequency. Queen 10 off. Not a great hand to just peel with. Uh, I like this play here, actually. And I like the fact that we're going over after the big stack here, to be honest. Because I do think he might have the mentality like, well, I am the big stack now. And he's on a, he's on a high. He's just one with kings against ace five. So I think he's just like, you know, the world is my oyster. I'm just going to raise here and uh, you guys are going to fold. Well, hang on a minute. No, we're not just going to fold. We're going to make you earn this one. You think you're just going to push us around with your big, big stack? Well, maybe you are <laughs> because you called and uh, we've got an SBR of two and a half on the flop, but that's okay. We've got a pretty good draw here. Uh, well, I'm, I'm a positive guy, all right? I'm a positive guy. We've got a 10 high flush draw. We could be crushed. He could have a hand like uh, Ace Jack with a diamond or King Queen. Uh, sorry, Jack Queen with a diamond. He could have some King X, but he can have, I think, a lot of Ace X. He can have a lot of uh, maybe even some suited connectors like 910. Maybe he's got a hand like fives, but he just didn't want to get it all in pre. So we're definitely going to fire here, I think. I wouldn't hate checking, but. The problem with checking is it makes it pretty easy for him to get to showdown. Like if he's got sixes here and you just uh, and we check back, he's probably going to get to showdown. If he's got a hand even like ace ten and we check ten, uh, check flop, he might get to showdown. Uh, and uh, if he donks turn, like say the turn is a jack, well maybe not a jack, but because we'd have a pretty good draw. But if the turn is an ace or a or a nine or a five or something like that. And he donk bets. Say the turn is an eight of hearts and he bets into us. All of a sudden, we got a pretty tough spot where we've only now got one card to hit a flush that might not even be good. So I think just betting here and just trying to take the pot down, continue to work with an uncapped range because we've been the pre-flop aggressor and continuing to tell the story on the flop. Pow. And the turn. So I, I think if he's got a hand like Jack Queen with the jack of diamonds, or if he's got ace eight with the eight of diamonds, if he's got a hand like sixes with or without a diamond, their hands now that I think are definitely going to fold. This makes us look like we are committed to the pot. And I think it looks really strong. Having said that, one question that, that uh, I would be asking myself in this situation is uh, on the flop, would he check raise with a nut draw? Like if he has ace 10 or ace nine or something like that with the ace of diamonds, does he check raise flop? It's hard to say. Uh, I'm not sure about this guy enough to answer that, but generally players would. I think rather than just call, they'd go ahead and say, well, I have the nut flush draw, a lot of fold equity. There's a ton of money out there. I'm just going to try and go for this one. And they probably would check raise flop. So I feel a little bit like he doesn't have the nut flush draw that often. Um, but if he does, I don't think he's folding to this bet. Um, and he may even check Jamus. But that being the case... You also got to wonder, does he? How does he play? We saw him raise against Woolland in a hand. I don't know if you guys noticed just a moment ago. He played the flop and raised the flop. Maybe he plays hands fast. Um, I don't know. Like if he has a king queen or king jack with a diamond, it makes sense to check call for sure. If he doesn't have a diamond, he may still pop control, but he may even just raise that on the flop as well. Um, but I think our biggest concern right now is that he has a hand like you know king jack of hearts, and he just didn't want to get it in flop, potentially crushed. Um, or maybe he has like king queen with the queen of diamonds and so he's thinking low well i'm just gonna let this guy barrel because i've got probably the best hand and probably the best draw um they're the main concerns but like i said there's a lot of hands i think where he's got like some some ace x's and stuff uh or small pairs and stuff like that that we can fold out and so i pull the, the uh, trigger there the fire the second barrel and we get him to fold which is a pretty awesome result because we now pick up a huge pot without a showdown and uh, take the chip lead and assume command of the ship, really, don't we? We just take command here. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, and raise and get the aggressive player on the button attacking, which is good. <laughs> but then we get this guy here, Wooland, pretty tight. Uh, he's been pretty tight, I think, and he just uh, shoves in the beans. Uh, so he's only M6.5. He's M7.5, 8. You have to assume that he's been somewhat perceptive. It is a final table. You have to assume that he's noticed that we open a lot and Vigance has, Vigance has been... I keep saying that with an accent. Vigance. 
<laughs> Vegans has been attacking. He's been aggressive. So I do feel like Wooland here could do this with some hands that we crush. Like if he's got fives, he's probably going to do this. I think any pair he probably does this, as well as a lot of Broadway combos like Ace-10, King-Queen, and King-Jack and stuff. He's probably going to go for this, I think. And so that being the case, we're doing really well against Woolen's range. Not to mention the fact there's already a ton of dead money out there from the initial open and the 3-bet. Against Vigance, well, we're doing really well as well, I think, because he's an aggressive player and he's just on the button. So I don't think we can fold this. I think this is one of those pots where you just close your eyes and say, hey, this is the one. Like, if we win this one, we are set up for this one, baby. And uh, we just got to go for it. Stuff in the beans here. Vegans folds. Not uh, not too surprising. <laughs> what a flop. Full house. Flop the trips. Turn the full. And he had ace-queen, so uh, it was a flip with a whole lot of dead money, which is pretty good for us. We weren't at risk of elimination as well. It's worth pointing that out. Uh, and uh, we could have afforded to take the hit from Wooland. We still would have had chips to play with, but as is the case, we get to bust him. Uh, we move ahead with the chip lead and five-handed play. See this guy open again. This time he has got the goods, apparently, because he's jammed. His four-bet jammed Nutty's three-bet, and, well, Nutty definitely had the goods because he had the rockets, and we very quickly move into four-handed play. Okay, see button open here. I've got the 6-9 suited. Uh, this is going to be a pretty easy call, getting 4-1. to one. And we flop middle pair here. This is an interesting situation. We've got a backdoor flush as well. I don't mind check raising, but check calling is fine as well. I would do both. If I think Dr. Boom is not going to apply pressure, then I would opt for probably check calling. But if I think he's the sort of guy that's going to barrel loss a lot, then I might just check raise and try to end the hand quickly. When we do check raise on that board, it's so dry. We don't rep represent a huge range. I mean, we're trying to say we've got like ace three, a six. Uh, maybe, I guess he might think we've got four, five. Um, but he did make a pretty light call before, didn't he? When he called with the jacks, when he was playing aces and queens with the jack kicker. So I think if we... He seems like that was a bit of a, it wasn't a, I don't think it was a terrible call, but I think he's a bit of a non-believer. So I think we want to be a bit careful getting out of control with check raises. So I, I understand check calling, why I might check call there, and I think it's fine. And once he he does bet turn, that's the, the perils of being out of position in a spot like that, um, is that he does get to barrel us off his hand, off our hand, but he probably did have it. He probably had the goods. So uh, we're just going to fold that one. Uh, I've folded there. I wouldn't wouldn't hate a limp, but uh, uh, and I wouldn't mind a three bet there actually. To it's kind of a big open. He's three x this one, uh, and we do have a hand where he he did call our three bet before out of position, and we don't want him doing that with a hand, when we have a hand like Ace Five. If we had a hand like King Jack suited, we wouldn't mind so much or Ten Jack suited, but those hands flop a bit better a little bit, have a bit more playability post, but ace-5 is uh, a little bit of a hand that just uh, relies more on raw equity. We could slap out a 3-bet there, uh, but I don't mind folding either. I mean, we are only 4-handed, but... Nutty's been a little bit on the aggressive side, but not a maniac with his opens, um, and he has shown a tendency to call, so I, I don't mind folding it. I'm not going to hate myself for not 3-betting there. But uh, I think three bet was probably. We do have two players as well behind who's got who've got pretty good jamming stacks. Um, so I don't think it's too bad. Three bet by Nutty takes it down. Folding eight nine, we see three bet bet call check 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 check. Ace king and ace ten. So Doctor Boom opted to just call with the ace ten there rather than get it in. Pre-flop, which is interesting. Uh, 28 and 7. There's 35. Sorry, not much more than that. There's 5,600 in there. So I think it's really close there. I would probably just have jammed that if I was Dr. Boom, to be honest. Because Vegans has been so aggressive. And he, effective, effective stack size is only M15. I guess it is really borderline isn't it you are probably risking 
a little bit too much. He's risking effectively 70k-ish behind to win 22. But you do have Ace-10 forehanded against an aggressive opponent. So I think four betting pre is not bad. I think calling is fine as well. And I think if he does take the option of calling, he probably does have to um, float behind flop in position. And I understand why he would check turn. I guess he just thinks he has the best hand. And the SPI is already won. So if his opponent has nines and he shoves or bets turn, it puts Vegans in a pretty tough spot though. So you could probably fold out some weakish hands. If he's got ace-king, ace-jack, you can fold that out with a turn bet. It's a pretty close turn, I think. But he's just like, this is pretty much for my tournament life. So I'm going to just check. I think I have the best hand. I guess that's what he's thinking. Uh, and I mean, a lot, of, a lot of the time, I think he would have the best hand. So I don't I don't necessarily mind him checking turn too much. It's a nice check raised by Dr. Boom, isn't it? I think if I'm betting king-queen here, I'm probably over betting the flop. We do have a 10 and a jack as a backdoor straight and two overs. It is kind of a bad board. It's pretty good for the big blind range. Having said that, we get a lot of leverage. We can get a lot of leverage with C-bets. We can fire some barrels. Um, but he is the shorter stack, so he probably is on his mind is that he's probably going to be pretty willing to take a stand soon. Because uh, his opponent's getting pretty big, a pretty big chip deficit on him. Uh, we're getting pretty big stacks, so. Um, but in any case, I'm just going to fold there because we've got the king high. Try and find a better spot. And he hasn't been aggressive enough that I'm not. I'm, I don't think he's against some players that really go after those boards. Like I wouldn't see bet there against myself because I know that I'm going to check raise a ton on that board. Um, but against. A player like Doc Boom, uh, I don't know that he's going to necessarily check raise that often on that flop. So I don't mind C betting, but he might prove, you know, he might prove me wrong there. I defend here with a king six off uh, and facing a C bet, I check raise. I don't mind this play, but I don't love it either. We did see. Vegans get a little bit tricky before when he C bet and then three bet Dr. Boom's check raise on an ace 10, was it ace 10 X all diamond board? So he does seem a bit sticky, which is a little bit concerning. We do have an over card that and a card that he might try to rep as well if a king hits. Uh, and we do maybe, you know, we could maybe if we think we don't have the best hand turn it into a bluff on a later street potentially. Uh, like you'd say the turn is like, turn is like a jack of clubs. Well, and it goes check, check, and then the river... No, actually, I don't know. It is going to be tricky. So I, I think check raising is good because it ends the hand quickly with what is normally the best hand. We just have the best hand a really high percentage here. And we just get to end the hand quickly rather than be trying to check call against an aggressive opponent with what is soon to be a low pair. Like, it looks good on the flop, but when the nine of, you know, hearts, nine of diamonds comes out on the turn, let's say, and he fires again... Now we're starting to hate life. So I've just tried to end the hand quickly here, which I think is which is fine. Uh, however, once he calls and we get this 10, uh, that puts us in a pretty tough spot and now he fires. So we've got to kind of ask ourselves, did he just float flop? Or does he or does he really have something legit? Is he got king is he got a queen and he's just trapping? Or is he just floated flop and just not believed us? I don't know if he'd float flop here. I mean, it's a fair chunk of his stack. He might think that we're repping pretty thin. He might think that we're repping flushes and queen x, which is... Because players don't normally expect you to raise a smaller pair on this. I think players generally don't. I think it's a mistake that players make is they don't raise enough to protect hands. So, that, you know, you can semi-bluff a hand here. Like, if you've got 3-4... Uh, I was talking about this the other day in a live stream when I check raise 3-4 on this board. Uh, and I think it was good play just because it's just so hard for that hand to hang on and you just often have the best hand on the flop and you can always turn your hand into a semi-bluff. Like if the turn comes a you know jack of clubs and the guy's got like sevens and you fire again, that's pretty hard for him to, to continue. So I think playing aggressively in these spots is often quite profitable and research that I've done has led me to believe so. So I don't mind this play, but having said that, I don't know even though he's aggressive, he's going to float that wide. 
uh, on this particular board. Because of the stack depth, he puts himself... I mean, if we check Jam here and he folds, like, <laughs> it's such a disgusting play. He's just blown off so much of his stack getting sort of fancy. Having said that, he does seem like a bit of a, a fancy player, fancy Nancy. So uh, I decided to just fold there. So if he did if he did float and then go for it, if he had like king nine of diamonds and floated and then made a nice turn bet, good on him. He played it well, but uh, he might have just had it that time. I hope he had it. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting hand, I think. King five here. Pretty close on this board. I could check all bet. Just opted to check. I think once we check flop, we should bet turn. I think he's going to bet if he's got an eight or a nine. Um, if he's got a six, I don't think he's going to call turn. So I, I think a delayed C bet here works pretty well. We might fold out king 10 and a six on the turn. But once we check turn, we really cap our range. And it makes it very hard for us to win the pot. So I think uh, I think I would have been perhaps happier betting turn there. If I had a bet turn and he called, I guess I would bet river. Uh, just because uh, I'd think that he probably had a four, a two, or ace high when he calls turn. And best case, he's got like six, eight or something. And even that is a bit of a tough spot for him. So I probably would have bet, uh, if I bet turn, I probably would back that up with a bet on the river and probably make them both pretty chunky, to be honest. Um, which may have won the pot for us, I guess, but I uh, checked it that time. I may have been adjusting to his him, him the way he's been playing recently because he's been upping the ante a bit. That might be why I've done that, which I think is a mistake because you don't want to assume that we haven't had a big enough sample, I think, for us to all of a sudden say, hey, this guy just check raises flops and, and gets pretty pretty, pretty out there. Um, so that could be a mistake on my behalf there, over-adjusting. I go ahead and limp here and uh, get we get, not surprisingly, raised here. It's very small, so we're getting 3 to 1, and we've got a nice hand, so we're going to be calling. And we get a nice flop, don't we? His raise was so small pre and we're very deep that it kind of looks like he's just trying to take the initiative, I think. He might have a hand that plays pretty well post, I guess, like 10-jack or something that he doesn't mind raising with king-jack. Um, didn't really feel like he had a really big hand, but he might, I guess. We check call with the flush draw here. And I think at this point, my plan was probably check raise. We could have a three, queen, ten, king, jack, stuff like that. Uh, we have limped small blind enough that he probably thinks that we can have some decent hands. Uh, in fact, I think he's probably seen us limp small blind a bit and not raising small blind. So our range is still relatively uncapped. It goes check, check, and then we get the river, the queen on the river. This is a really good bluff card for us. Our range here should be pretty queen x heavy. Um, and it could still contain some aces as well as king, jack. So... The only, this is, I mean, this is pretty much the weakest hand that we have here. Maybe 4-5, maybe 4-5 with a 5 of spades. Sometimes I check call flop, thinking we can rep on a later street and we've got a gutsa. Uh, I guess that's not impossible, but I uh, yeah, I probably would have sometimes have that because he raised so small. He two bet so small after our limp pre-flop that I'm probably going to continue with virtually everything. So aside from 4-5, uh, I think this is probably the weakest hand that we have is the miss flush draw. So I think it's good to be betting it because Queen X is heavily in our range in our opponent's eyes as well as Ace X. Well, I mean, it is in our, in our range. So Ace X, Queen X uh, and, and the odd King Jack. So I think that's a really good card to, to be betting on. And uh, he just folds. So that worked out really well. I think that was, uh, again, just small balling there. Uh, just limping pre and then just calling a little raise and stuff and just uh, working post-flop and uh, just playing hands nicely post-flop is, is paying off for us. 
without getting in any of high, sort of those high risk situations, you know, like the ace five three bet before, the king jack three bet, um, the king six suited earlier against uh, big and so thinking about um, four betting. Uh, we've just kind of kept it clean to this point, I think, and uh, seen a few flops, which I think has worked in our favor. 10 jack here open. Uh, a largish three bet from Doc. We fold. I wouldn't hate a jam there, but again, uh, after just saying, <laughs> after just saying about the cleanness, playing clean, I don't want to do anything cr cr crazy. Uh, I think this is. <laughs> having said that, we've been playing pretty solid. Uh, I think this is actually a really good uh, squeeze here. Yeah, we only have the nine two suited, but. We've kept our noses pretty clean, and I think this is pretty believable. And we know that Vigens is opening a lot, and Doc Boom's been getting pretty active, and he's just flattered on the button. He's probably going to do that with a lot of suited one gappers and connectors and some broadways that aren't going to be able to commit for a quarter of his stack. I think this is a really nice play, actually, and the timing on it is really good, I think. So I like this play. I think we just get a whole lot of folds because of the leverage we get. Uh, we just put a risk a quarter of these. These guys look like they're going to be committed if they play this hand, but their ranges are wide enough that they're going to be folding a lot, and they do. So it's important to be perceptive in spots like that. That's just a stack size and player. Adjusting to your opponents and working off the stack size is what it comes down to uh, at final tables. And uh, that's what we see there, which just leveraging the stack against you know wide ranges, putting, pressure, putting, putting them under pressure. So it worked out well. And we um, continue to wield this big stack like a hammer of war. And now we get Ace King. It's great timing, isn't it? When you just you've just attacked a guy's nine two suited, and then you get Ace King, like, and you get three bet. It's, it's like it's like you're just seeing clouds have opened up, the sun shines, there's a rainbow in the distance on the hill, and you just slam in all the beans and say, "Flop me top pair." And he has the same hand. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, we might get a bit of credit back there. Hey, this guy had ace king. Who would have thought? Surprised no one bet there to try and fold off chops. Oh, the rainbow is still there, isn't it? Oh my lord! <laughs> we get a UTG open. Doc Boom goes with a three bet. 